Snow Tracks is brought to you by Polaris. Think outside. Ski-Doo. Winter lovers get out there and experience that Ski-Doo feeling. And by Hercules Tire. Ride on our strength. Last season, we did a story on the different regions of Quebec and the trips that we'd taken to each one of them and the highlights of those trips. This season, in Supertracks Magazine, we've done a story highlighting the different regions in Quebec and what's special about each one. Today, though, we've got something else coming. Absolutely. We have so many questions come in about the province of Quebec and snowmobiling there. I mean, it is overwhelming how many of you ask us about Quebec. I get, I get talked to at the gym about you know, how snowmobiling in Quebec and where should I go? It's just, it's just a huge popular topic. So we contacted uh, a special friend of ours, Craig Nicholson, the intrepid snowmobiler, and he gave us some behind the scenes, in interesting information about Quebec. We've referenced our own stories and our own trips, and we have put together the answers to some of the most asked questions about Quebec that we have got, and we're gonna answer them right now. Probably the biggest question we get asked is from American riders who are wondering about going to Quebec. And you know, the truth is, it's really easy for Americans to get to Quebec to ride. The province of Quebec borders the provinces of Ontario and New Brunswick in Canada and the states of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine in the US. So there's a direct border link in those states right into Quebec. And no matter where you're coming from to ride in Quebec, you always got to make sure that you have your insurance and your proof of ownership with you no matter where you are. On top of that, make sure that you go to the FCMQ website and purchase a Quebec trail permit. You're going to need this. There's one other thing that's really important. It's about your snowmobile itself. In Quebec, all snowmobiles need to have mirrors. So make sure you have mirrors installed. And Quebec has a very strict rule about stock exhaust. No aftermarket exhaust. So make sure your sled conforms to those rules before you go riding there. So the top things to remember, make sure you have a passport for everyone in your vehicle, not just your driver's license, ownerships for truck, trailer, and snowmobile, and leave your firearms at home. So if you're coming from the U.S., the first regions you're going to encounter in Quebec are Chaudier-Appalaches, which also borders Centre du Québec, and then further northeast is Bay saint laurent And all three of these areas have excellent loop trail systems that you can go out and ride, and they're also serviced incredibly well by gas stations, restaurants, dealerships, the whole nine yards. One of the cool things about riding Chaudier Appalaches is that it borders Centre du Quebec uh, and the trails are very similar between those two regions. So if you are going to one, you kind of got to visit the other. If you're crossing into Quebec from Ontario, you're going to either come in at Abitibi to Miskaming or Oudaway. Both of these feature really remote wilderness riding as well as more built up urban areas. But keep in mind, if you are coming in, check out the interprovincial Pontiac Bridge. This is a snowmobile specific bridge that you can cross from province to province. Also, if you're coming from Ontario, you gotta check out Devil's Mountain, which is located in the Laurentians region. The trails around this area are amazing and Devil's Mountain is something you just gotta see. Now, while we're talking about Abitibi to Miskaming, we get asked a whole lot of times, can you actually ride early and late season in Quebec? And when it comes to December to April riding, the answer is absolutely yes in certain areas. The two regions that I have personally ridden early and late, very early and very late, is Abitibi Tamiskaming and Iwishi Bay James. I have ridden as late as April, and I mean, you can ride 
sometimes in November, but there's almost always snow in December in those areas. So if you're trying to get a ride in early or you just want one more awesome ride at the end of the season, those are the regions you need to check out. Keep in mind that snowfall in these areas is pretty much known as being epic. Oh yeah. The trails in these regions are known to be very flowy and have tons of uh, elevation changes. And one thing to keep in mind is that these are pretty remote areas, so there really isn't a lot of traffic out there. Lots of times you might find you have the trail all to yourself. All right, speaking of epic snowfalls, that brings us to our next question, which is the types of riding that you can do in Quebec. Now, everybody already knows that Quebec has 33,000 kilometers of snowmobile trails that's groomed multiple times a week. Uh, it's pretty impressive statistic. Um, and basically what it means is that if you're a trail rider, any region in Quebec is gonna give you an absolutely amazing experience. However, there are two regions that have designated off-trail riding areas, and that is Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean and Gaspésie. Like Iwishi Bay James, which it borders, Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean is also known for its very high snowfall, as well as its great elevation changes. And it's also home to Mount Valais, which is a very popular spot for off-trail riding. If you're gonna ride Gaspésie, it's home to one of the East Coast's most popular, most well-known riding areas. Uh, the Chick Chalk Mountains. And basically the Chick Chalk Mountains are as close to riding out west as you can get on the east coast with epic snowfalls and some pretty impressive elevation. But the nice part about both of those places is that you get the steep, but you don't get like high altitude above 6,000 feet. So the air is still dense. You can still breathe. You can still have lots of fun and they are great places to ride off trail. However, we do need to be very specific. In Quebec, it's extremely important for the sake of all the trails, keeping them open, keeping everybody happy, stay on the trail unless you're in those two spots. Another thing that we get asked is, is there a language barrier going to Quebec? We have not experienced it. We are not bilingual. We don't have any problem riding any regions of Quebec, but if you are a little bit concerned, the regions of Lenodier, Maurice, Centre du Quebec, as well as Quebec City have excellent riding and also no language issues no. whatsoever. And one of the reasons for that is that they all have major urban centers in them, um, Quebec City, Montreal, and others. So uh, it's another great point about those regions. If you're the kind of rider who wants to ride during the day and then go out for like have a, a nice dinner at night or go out to clubs or whatever it is, go shopping. If you got the family and you want things to do, those are great regions because they've got so many other things that you can do. Um, but because they're urban centers, honestly, like everybody totally speaks bilingual. English, so don't even worry about it. Now, trails in these areas are absolutely fantastic. I mean, some of the best in the entire province of Quebec, but keep in mind, they are also some of the busiest due to them being in urban centers. Another thing about this area that's amazing is the trail signage, and that's another thing that ties into the bilingual question or, or the language barrier question. The signage in these areas is excellent. The club does an amazing job with, with which town is where and what you can expect. So you'll never feel like you're gonna get lost. And the other thing that goes with that is that the hotels, gas station, restaurants, all of the amenities also do an incredible job of signage. So if you know what hotel you're looking for or what restaurant you're headed to, sign. signs are everywhere, follow it, and you're gonna get there. So that's uh, it's a pretty easy region to navigate no matter where you're from. Snow Tracks is brought to you by Princess Auto, Ideas, Tools.
All right, now we got to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> now, there is a misconception about Quebec that theft is a problem. Yeah. And we'll just be straight up honest with you. There was a time in the past when that was true. The 90s. The 90s. However, today, it's simply not true anymore. Quebec is a very safe province. Well, with that said, no matter where you're going when you're traveling with your sleds, your trucks, and your trailers, you should be paying attention to how you're securing them and making sure they're secured well. For sure. Quebec service providers have gone to great lengths to provide excellent security. Most of the hotels have gated lockups, um, compounds that are monitored 24 seven. A lot of them even have heated indoor storage for your sled. It's awesome. They thaw out and in the morning it's ready to rock. Now, if you're worried even more, go to the FCMQ website and check out because they have a whole section dedicated to the hotel security program that'll list all the hotels that actually offer you these great services. Two regions that I've personally visited and know has great hotels with uh, some of the best snowmobile security is Charlevoix and Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean. Now, maybe equally as important as that is that the trails in these regions are amazing. They've got crazy elevation changes, they're super fast and flowy, but they also have some of the best views you're ever going to find because they border the St. Lawrence River and the Fjord du Saguenay. Yeah, it's also interesting to note that this is the home to the Fairmont Le Manoir Richelieu, which is one of the most popular hotels in all of Quebec, and they actually have underground heated snowmobile parking. I have been there. That's pretty cool. And it was awesome. You drive in the same door as the cars, <laughs> and the people in the cars and it's a really fancy restaurant so they're all like in suits and stuff and you're walking through in your snowmobile suit and everybody treats you great it's such a cool spot now the next thing we want to talk about is not necessarily a question that we've been asked but it's something important that we want to tell you about and some things that are important some things that are important yeah and i mean underground parking is seriously cool but uh this next region has some of the most impressive landmarks and sort of cool riding experiences that you're going to be able to experience Anywhere. in quebec and this region is collectively known as Quebec by the Sea. That includes three separate regions, Bay Saint Laurent, Côte Nord, and Gaspé Z. Now, these areas are basically bordering the St. Lawrence, so the trails are going to just inherently give you incredible views of the St. Lawrence, and they are some of the best views you're going to get anywhere uh, riding on a snowmobile. Côte Nord, though, is far more remote, much farther north, so if you're looking for more of a wilderness experience or exploring areas that feel very untouched, that's where you want to go. Now, Gas Bay is home to one of Quebec's most famous landmarks, and that is Pierce Rock. The trail leads like right close to it and offers incredible views. And you've been there, so you've seen it. I have. You know firsthand how cool it is. I do. It now, is. if you are in the Quebec by the sea area, one of the things you have to do, one of the most unique experiences you can get on a snowmobile is the ferry between Bay Saint Laurent and Cote Nord. Um, you can drive your sleds right on the ferry. The ferry is a couple hours long, so it gives you a chance to like hang out and talk. And I mean, at one point you're in the middle, you can barely see the shores on either side. It's absolutely something you have to do. Now we say this about every single story that we've done about Quebec. There's not enough time to answer every question or give you every detail about each different region in Quebec. It's just not possible. But hopefully we have answered some of your questions and we've helped you understand some of the things you need to know before you travel there. But I do have one last tip before you go and plan your trip. Make sure you check out the Bonjour Quebec website, which gives you information on every region, the FCMQ website, where you can purchase your trail permits and check trail conditions, and the iMoto Neige app. Download that one because it gives you instant access to trail conditions and trail status. Now, as well as these three resources, you're going to want to check out the ultimate planning guide for Quebec in the latest issue of Supertrax magazine, and then obviously this story. This story. These are going to give you the absolute best information possible to plan the best trip to Quebec that is going to get you hooked for life. We know that it will, and the reason we know that is we are, because we are.
Snow Tracks has been brought to you by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. Udaway Tourism. Snow covered landscapes to explore. And by FXR. Brings you more. This is 2024, and it's time to introduce you to somebody new the Arctic Cat ZR600 129 with ATAC. Obviously, you've probably been living under a rock if you hadn't heard about the Catalyst platform. And when it comes to Catalyst, Arctic Cat's made a lot of noise, a lot of claims, and really said a lot of big things about this sled. Most of them are true. Obviously, Catalyst is the biggest news to hit Arctic Cat in the last, well, decade. It comes in many different forms from mountain to crossover with the Riot, as well as the Trail ZRs. Catalyst is a complete change. My initial impressions of this sled, I thought, yeah, it looks different, but is it different enough? And until I rode it, I didn't think so. But now, I do. Well, first things first, let's talk about something that hasn't changed a whole lot. It has changed a little bit, and that is the 600 SeaTech 2 motor. It's still the same SeaTech 2, but to get it to fit into this snowmobile, they had to make new motor mounts. It shifts the engine down an inch and back an inch as compared to previous chassis. When it comes to performance of that 600, it really hasn't changed all that much. It's still that kind of 125 to 130 horsepower range. But let me tell you, when they hooked that engine up to the belt drive under the hood, which is an industry first on the trail, it made that SeaTech 2 600 really come alive. The engine sounds great in this sled. And I am going to say this, and it is fact, this is the best sounding two-stroke in the business right now, bar none. Performance of the 600 out on the trail is very good. Mid-range, I would say, is where it wakes up. Down low, it's slightly softer as compared to, let's say, the Polaris 650. But once you get it into that mid-range, you really open it up and it gets on the pipe. This engine comes alive and corner to corner, there is everything there that you need from a 600 and a whole lot more as compared to the previous chassis. And I gotta tell you, I am very excited to find out what it feels like with a bigger motor. The ZR129 in 2024 comes with either ATAC or a regular coilover shock. We chose ATAC for today's test ride, and let me tell you, it's a really good system. I will say I find the firm setting to be incredibly firm, like take it out on a snowcross track style firm, but the medium and the low setting is actually very, very comfortable, very soft. I was concerned at first about the diameter of the coils on the shocks and the actual, the, the diameter of the Fox bodies on the shock. These are really small as compared to most of the other in the industry, even the shock shaft is quite small. But I will say, with the light weight of this sled, keeping in mind that Arctic Hat has lowered weight of the Catalyst 10% over previous chassis, therefore they're able to use a smaller body diameter shock. And it works. So something really important to talk about when it comes to the Catalyst platform is the steering system. On the Arctic Hat previous chassis, there was, I believe it's between 13 and 15 different moving parts between the handlebars and getting down to the skis. There is now three different moving parts. They have cut that back so significantly that the handlebar input and ski output is incredible. What you put in at the handlebars, you see as output at the skis. On the Catalyst, it is tight, it is sharp, it's precise. I will say at 129 inches in the platform that I have today, the ZR, it has a little bit of push through the corners when the trail is hard packed and hard groomed. But as soon as this, the trail starts to soften up, you get a little bit more sugary snow, it's maybe a bit heavier, it really starts to handle good. The rear suspension on the ZR is a 129. This has a 1.25 inch lug, and it's very similar to the old slide action. Delivers a very similar ride quality as well, but I will say, because you're so much further forwards on this sled, the feel of the rear suspension is much different. And I will compare that to the Skidoo because Skidoo put people further forwards, which made the rear suspension and the impact of it feel less on your body because you were more in the middle of the, the fulcrum, the tipping point. I will say Arctic Cat has done a very similar thing and it makes that rear suspension feel like it's riding that much better. Keeping with the ZR traditions, it's a very competitive feel. I'm pretty certain I could take this sled out on a snowcross track and have absolutely zero problems tearing it around. But then when I put it on the trail, it's very comfortable and confident for that rider who's looking for an aggressive trail stance and aggressive trail performance sled. So there's quite a list of included features on the ZR Catalyst. Number one thing is the Arctic Cat attach system at the back. This is for clipping on 
all of your accessories, whether it be fuel tanks or storage bags or whatever it might be. And Articat claims that it's the fastest attachment system in the business. We're not sure if it is, but they're usually pretty right about that stuff. Now, some of the other neat features, you're gonna notice that the running boards on this sled look like they're plastic. Well, they are. They're composite, and composite is, in my mind, another word for plastic. But they work really well, and it's a way to save weight, which is a hallmark of this sled, saving 10% over the previous generation. Now, there's some other cool stuff that comes into play here as well, like easy to remove body panels and seat. The seat on this Catalyst comes off with one Zeus fastener, and it gives you access to your battery. Very smart, very quick, very efficient. When it comes to the panels on the snowmobile, it's three easy half turns, just like previous, but these panels come off way simpler, they also go on way simpler, and the fit and finish is impeccable. The hood comes off with two simple fasteners as well, and you get full access to the underside of this snowmobile. It's smart, it's simple, and it works. Overall, I am very impressed with the ZR and the Catalyst platform. This snowmobile delivers performance, 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 and that's what Articat has always been known for. It's been their hallmark. I'm very impressed with how the snowmobile performs. I'm very impressed with the technology when it comes to belt drive and composite running boards. There's serious, serious technology at work here, and I know that Articat has a whole lot more in store for the Catalyst, so make sure you stay tuned. <laughs>